Lemon Amiga present. A play diet video in you. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Driving Force, published by Digital Magic Software in 1990. You can see from the options menu, we can change between joystick or the mouse, and Driving Force gives us lots of options, including the Knockout, the League, and the Mini Knockout, and the Mini League, and even a demo mode, and by clicking on, well, I think it's the very right side of those keys, then you can find the pointer, and from there you can click on the various options you can see on that screen. You can see some vehicles as well, and they won't appear highlighted on those races that are automatic in the league, and you can change drivers as well, and by clicking on this tab you can also change the drivers, male or female, and select a country as well, from a selection. So for this let's just go for the UK British driver and let's also just go for the plain old league where we can't select our vehicle and we'll select the music for this and now we can click on race to check this game out. So this is driving force on the Amiga. As you can see, Driving Force is a very fast 2.5D racing game where we get to drive headlong into the scenery. And you might notice other tip-offs to other games as well. This unfortunately is the very last in the series of play guides for Series 5, which started way back when, and I also have a list of games that we'll be covering in Season 6. And Season 6 is, unfortunately for some, that's got so many unknown and lesser known games in there, and so rather than go for the big haters that I've gone for for most of these series, I decided to go for some requests. So some requests include Oil Imperium, and also Innocent Until Court, Power Drome, King of Chicago, Mind Walker, Alien Breathe 3D, and also Lancaster, and I think Hydrosis as well. So Hydrosis was requested by me, so I'm going to cover that in the next series, as well as other unknown games, Fascination and Starblade, but also definitely Warhead, I've definitely had people asking about Warhead for a million years, so we'll definitely cover that in a guide. Also Apprentice as well, which definitely had a recommendation. But we'll also go for Zool 2, also Fishhead Buddha, Take Em Out, Robocop 2, Gym Power, and all kinds of games like that. Even Lure of the Temptress. So we will be covering the odd AAA title, but mostly we'll be going for the lesser known titles next season, and that's because some Patreon viewers have requested them, and it's such a mixed bag that I discovered that it was possible to find all kinds of lesser known games that I thought that I might as well cover them all in a whole series. And then the second half, hopefully we'll get on to Orcon, Blastar, Universal Warrior, Cosmic Space Head, Lamatron, Fiendish Freddy's Big Top of Fun, Archipelagos, and also Knights of the Sky, hopefully, in Season 6. on to that next track we also get to season 7 where we get to 
Back to the known games again, where we're looking at Sleepwalker, Shadow Dancer, Fears, Wings, Clacks, Defender of the Ground, Jimmy White Snooker, Kickoff 2, Parasol Stars, Sensible Golf, Menace, Carve Up, The Secrets of Monkey Island, Mortal Kombat, Cadaver, Heimdall, Populous 2, Flashback, and all those mega mega hits, that's in Series 7. So in Season 8, we'll be getting to even more of those games. Barbarian, Theme Park, Second Samurai, Hired Guns, Sim City, Plotting, Eurydium Plus, Watchtower AGA, Predator 2, Dune, Moonstone, Mercenary 3, Viracop, and maybe even Galactic Warrior at some Purple Assassin Day as well. Definitely the game Summer Edition will be going in there at some point. At this point, I just want to thank all of my patrons for joining me this year and for requesting all those really weird requests like Fish Head Buddha, and we'll definitely get around to them with any more requests next series. And so those are all recorded, I just have to record the narration for them. Whilst I'm recording this video, I might as well update everybody on the waffle and I've had requests to do live plays, things like that and unfortunately I have a very weedy slow connection which takes all day to upload even the shortest video so I'm not quite sure whether that's even possible on my setup but live plays and things like that might be possible, I don't know, maybe I'll be lured into that not really much for social media, but there might become a point where that becomes possible. During this year particularly, I've had some dental problems and my dental problems are giving me jip even to this day. The same tooth is in there. So it gets to late at night and it starts throbbing with severe pain. So eventually that thing will have to be ripped out of my mouth and eventually I'll have to pay for maybe a fake tooth or it would be cheaper just to get them all out and get a set of dentures. Teeth are supposed to last a lifetime, I'm in my 40s now and my lifetime is probably double that so you can probably imagine that my teeth aren't going to last. It would be wonderful if somebody could invent some kind of teeth that work like a keyboard and you put some kind of metal thing in there and then stamp a key on top with a spring and your whole teeth would act like a keyboard bouncing up and down just to clean them, you just remove them like a key on a keyboard, clean them and stick them back in your mouth. But until somebody comes up with a 3D printed tooth which has gold and silver and black teeth and all these kinds of teeth that you can swap around in your mouth, unfortunately dentists are going to charge thousands for that and that's maybe £1,800 too much for me. So I'm going to have to grin and bear it and next year if I don't have that tooth in I'm going to say oh, I don't have any teeth in my mouth, which is wonderful. Notice on the Amiga we are playing this driving game, it's one of the few driving games that we're playing this series and because driving games are one of my favourite games you won't get to see too many more that we haven't covered already. And we've covered fantastic games like F1 which really took the Vroom formula and took that into the stratosphere on hard mode and that's probably the fastest Amiga game I've ever seen in my life. And we've already covered Crazy Course 3 and Formula 1 Grand Prix and all of the Lotus games and anything that was decent on the Amiga. I can't remember when I got this game driving force and I definitely know that I had this on copy back in the day and I had this from when I got my Amiga in 1992.
Yes, I got my Amiga Christmas 1992, which means I was basically using it in 1993, and by then all of the best Amiga games were already out. I clung on to my C64 for dear life for too many years, saying, no mum, it's fine, all of the games that I want are already on the Commodore 64, I don't need an Amiga. But eventually, Andrew Morris's graphics turned my head around, and that's when I discovered Lotus 1, and Supercars 2, and I also discovered this game, as well as Apprentice and Lemmings, and it was one of the very first copied games that I had, because when I had my second hand, first Amiga 500, it came with a load of original games in their original boxes. I don't think this was one of them, and this thing came out for $24.95, ladies and gentlemen. Today that might seem cheap, and perhaps a Mars bar costs even more than that, but back in the day, $24.95 was very expensive, and you could buy Lotus 1 for the same money, so this game had to offer more than the rest, and for me, when I played it, it felt like a public domain game that was highly polished, and that was mainly because of the quality of these graphics. One of the original coders of this game, Jules Burt, got in touch with the Lemon Amiga website at some point, maybe last year or the year before, and he gave us some information, and I'll be popping up that information during this play guide, so you can read that and see what he had to say about the game. As for the graphics, he said that the graphics were half the height, and they had to be doubled by some kind of doubling effect, maybe blitter doubling, and that meant that the speed could be kept up, with the scrolling backgrounds, a dual layer of parallax scrolling backgrounds, you might notice, and this meant that the game kept up the frame rate all the way through. I'm not sure if this was an NTSC compatible game, because I generally play these on full automatic screen scaling mode, and that means that I'm gonna get a better rip than usual, but this was recorded some time ago, so I'm not quite sure what I used at the time. But you can see, it's a good game, it's a fast game, and even though the graphics have been doubled in height, the actual sprites of the main player hasn't, and that means the main sprite has those 16 colours, and I think maybe 8 colours for the rest. But you can see that the sprite is very well drawn, and the rest of the game is very well drawn. It's just that the roads themselves are a tiny bit blocky. We are playing the full championship mode of this game, and that runs for 25 races, ladies and gentlemen. Some of those I will be speeding up during this recording, just to save it getting boring, but that's why it's a long, long game, and it took me maybe an hour to complete all of the races. You can see I'm the only British driver on that leaderboard, so it won't be too difficult to keep up with my progress, and I'm hoping to get into maybe first or second position. And you can see, starting off in a new one, it's important not to get hit on the very first lap, and it's also important to preempt as many of these turns as much as possible, and the road will try to throw us off, but just like Super Hang On, we can release the fire button, and that will mean that we get the grip back, and by pressing that fire button wildly, hopefully we can stay on the track. I don't think it gives us a representation of our speed at all, but we do get a sense of speed in the game, and we do get a sense when we're going full speed that we can't go any quicker. On 
Once You See Me struggling to catch up to the leaders, I'll say that this was co-produced by Jules Burt, who was a programmer at Digital Magic Software, and he went on to become the CEO, he basically, I think, founded the thing, and he also programmed Shockwave as well, and the diabolical Black Shadow for CRL, who apparently had a contract with... EA and they guaranteed 10 games a month to be released on the Amiga and of course CRL could not release 10 games a month on the Amiga but what they did release was a lot of shoddy games just like Black Shadow which you might remember from the 15 worst vertical shooters on the Amiga. Stepping aside from my top 15 worst collection, this is one of the better driving games. It's not the best one, but it's not the worst one. And it's got that Amiga feel to it, that magic Amiga quality, which defines this as a 16-bit title. And this definitely isn't a 32-bit title or an 8-bit title. This is something that tried to stretch the computer a little bit further. And it's not as fast as Crazy Course 3, it hasn't got the handling, it hasn't got the graphics, it hasn't got the music, it hasn't got all of the resolutions or the polish or the gameplay, but what it does have is lots of Amiga charm, and it's got enough grip on that road, enough playability, and enough going on with these graphics to make it feel like it's a good thing. Um, down in 6th place at the moment, it doesn't feel like a good thing when you're right at the back and it only gives us 3 laps to get in front, if we don't then unfortunately we'll find a load of back markers in the way and every time we collide into any of the scenery we'll be knocked back as well, which is like a pinball game, we'll be bounced around that screen and we'll lose all of that speed as well. Whereas I know the graphics in this game were created by John Law, who also created the graphics for Scorpion for Digital Magic Software, and that was a scrolling street brawler game, Scorpion, and the music was created by Bjorn Lin, who also created the music for classics Escape from Cold Hits, Project X, Brat, Alien Breathe 3D, Worms, and Quack, amongst others. See, it's very disheartening when you fall off that track and we do get re-centred onto that track pretty smartly and that is enough to definitely lose a place if you are in the top three. So it's important to get into the top three early, at least on that first lap. And then you can put your foot down over all of the rest of it. See, on this level we have some palm trees, and palm trees are always welcome in an Amiga game, not as highly defined as the Carthage game that we saw, and that definitely did have better boogie boy graphics than this game, although there wasn't really much point to it. See, taking a look at the box art, we can see some glorious images on the back of the box, and if we zoom in on that, we can see some of its key features. 50, count them, 50 frames per second in this game. We also get six pieces of driving music, all created by Bjorn Lin. Also, 12 different competitions. 50, count them again, 50 frames per second. 30 different tracks. No disc swapping at all, because it's all on just one disc. There are six different vehicles five varied terrains of which the colour changes in the sky for them there's a practice mode a choice between male and female joystick or mouse and last but not very least eight 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 opponents on that screen 
It was available for $24.95 on the Amiga. It came out in November 1989 in time for Christmas 1990. And the Atari ST got its own conversion a few months later for a fiver cheaper. And that came out in February 1990. Ask your store for a demonstration now. And if they say no, take it out of the box, put it into the Amiga and play it. Digital Magic Software were based in, well, Cheshire, UK. Their address was 5 Midwood House, Midwood Street, Midwood Road, Midwood Town, Midwood Area in Midwood, otherwise known as Widness, Cheshire. And 5 Midwood House, I've no idea what that's up to right now, but it was there in Widness, sunny, sunny Widness in Cheshire. Amiga, we find ourselves in second position. Woohoo! And that means that we're behind the Brazilian. And the Brazilian, well, you get nine points for if you win it, and seven points if you come second, and it goes all the way down the line. You can see that we're in third place overall with 67 of those points. Twenty-five races on the go, they get steadily harder, and that will take you a long time to get through them. But there is a mini league that you can get through as well, and a knockout and a mini knockout. So there is definitely something on offer if you only have those ten minutes to spare. And driving in this game is an art, and you have to learn that art, otherwise you'll be crashing. And easy does it because if you veer off that side, you know that you will be hitting something. And you can see that by this point, the leaders of this race are very difficult to overtake. You have to match them speed for speed and not make any mistakes on any of the levels. And that means slowly but surely you will inherit that lead. And it's just a matter of keeping the lead for the rest of the race, as long as you don't touch any of the obstacles. And you can see there are some barriers on the side of the road to help us not go off, but if you touch those, you'll just be in third place straight away. So you can't go off, you can't hit anything, you can't collide with anything, you can't slow down. All you can do is keep feathering away with that fire button and keep trying to keep this thing in the middle of that road. I had no luck whatsoever with that race, came in third, and you never know what you're going to get with these races unless you've memorised all of the 25, and it gives you a very, very nicely drawn cutscene, or a still image in between each one, so that you can get ready. And the night courses, and the snow courses, and the woodland courses, the forest, the city, whatever it might be, they don't vary at all in difficulty, they get steadily harder because the racers get faster, and the corners don't get any more difficult, once you reach maximum corner, they don't get any more than that, hopefully, until you get to the very last races, so you should be able to floor it over these, and as long as you put your foot down, you can see height changes as we bounce over things, and as we climb over things as well, and every course has got those elevation changes and those jumps, but you can see jumps are available, and jumps are definitely available in this game. see some signs by the side of the road and I don't think they're advertising anything special, I think it says DNS, maybe that's something to do with the Amiga, but you can see some 
trees as well of different kinds on every single level and so there are some scenery changes and you can see a nice purple sky as well so by choosing claw it is possible to catch up to that third position We are still in third position in that league, you can see it's going to take some amount of points to catch up to that leader now, and that leader does give us a healthy amount of challenge, and it's not a pushover, and apparently you can have up to eight other races, I'm not quite sure about that because it looks like there's only six here, but you do get back markers as well, and maybe if you don't head off on that line there are some cars behind us, I've never actually stopped to find out. You can see the wheels on our vehicle do move up and down. There is animation on all of these vehicles from flags to wheels. And I don't think there are any brake lights because you don't brake in this game. You put your foot down and that's all there is to it. Halfway through our review of Driving Force, not Driving Force, they didn't bother to put a G on the end of it. Who needs a G in this game? All you need is high speed. And you can see that flag moving on the buggy, you can see the engine bouncing up and down, and different things as well. I think it's even got a shadow effect, I'm not quite sure, but you can see that there is enough on offer on this rally course or this dirt track or whatever it might be and this is definitely has the variety of all these different stages and all these different terrains and it doesn't get any more slippery in the mud which is terrific there's no inertia in this game apart from the corners trying to throw you off which is also terrific and so it seems to play fairly all the way through it Digital Magic Software, according to the Lemon Amiga database, had seven games officially released including Driving Force, Escape from Cold Hits, Fly Fighter, and also Narcissus, which looks very ropey, the aforementioned Scorpion, the very impressive looking Shockwave, and also a shooter Trained Assassin. And so Shockwave was a 3D game where you are on a boat and I think you get to go through tunnels and things like that. And so it was very impressive, apart from the frame rates. And the frame rates of this game, 50 frames per second, is amazing. And this game might remind you of other games, let's just mention it, Power Drift. And anybody who's played Power Drift on the Amiga knows it was a very slow, clunky game and the makers of this game did show this to Activision and the people who were publishing the official Power Drift license on the Amiga and apparently the Amiga Power Drift conversion was well into development when they showed them this game maybe as a full game or as a demo and they seemed interested when they spoke at a trade show but unfortunately they did not snatch up this license and Power Drift officially was released onto the Amiga at some point later on. But this game does remind me of Power Drift, it's got all those elevation changes, except it's got one key difference to Power Drift, and that's that this game is a playable game, and you might say enjoyable because of that. 
And it's that small difference. It's not the graphics. It's not the music. It's not anything else to do with presentation or availability or price. It's to do with basic playability. And that leads to a fun experience. And so it doesn't matter what kind of bits your machine has. 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. As long as it has that playability. Well, I'll look at that very close to avoid some of these things. As long as it has that, then we're rocking and rolling. Look at this. We're in first place. And sometimes you can go straight through those back markers, which is good. Another good thing. And it's been adopted on modern simulators that you can go straight through back markers. In this game, it was adopted maybe the first of its kind. Now in second position with 102 points. And so let's catch up those 33 points now to the leader. All these races are going to be hard. And I haven't played this game, obviously, since back in the day. So after a slow start, we're now warming up. Let's see how far we can get with the entire championship. And let's bump and burn in this game. If you're a fan of AVGN, the trucks might remind you of something else. Yes, big rigs! Big rigs where you fall off bridges and slide straight through the scenery. Big rigs! Big rigs! If you've played big rigs, you know that's the pinnacle of driving on any computer ever. And this, to my money, is better than big rigs because you can jump and it pulls you out of those holes you can still go straight through the scenery but it pulls you out of it you can still bounce around the scenery without going through it and you can still compete with the rest of the players without having your mind numbed and your head falling off big rigs is a omni amiga hey kids Strap yourself in for some action-packed racing! It's Big Rigs! 18 wheels of thunder, and we got trucks! Yeah, trucks. Finishing off this race, you can see that we're struggling now with these later courses, and there are some lights with the laps to go. It highlights two lights when there's two laps gone and then the third light comes on just as we go under that line and that means because of that diabolical effort we'll have to forfeit that race and drop a few places and lose a few places as well but the variety in this game really speaks for itself this is before mxgp this is before the trials races that we get these days if you wanted 3d trials games on the amiga and them x games then this is the 3d experience for you it's better than outrun europa it's got the elevation it's got the speed it's got the playability and the charm and it's also better than a lot of the modern races which seem to have massive graphics no charm whatsoever let's also mention enduro racer yes that classic enduro racer we got to hop over logs and jump over things on the arcade it was possible to do that on 3d or rather 2.5d on the amiga and so this game proves that it was possible this is head and shoulders 100 billion percent than enduro racer on any conversion on any computer and we didn't actually get enduro racer on the amiga so this is the best of all worlds we've seen it's better than big rigs now we've seen it's better than enduro racer Look at that, crowds by the side of the road waving us on, like Indy 500. And it's great to see crowds and things like that. Obviously, they were limited to the size of the things that they could draw on the screen. But look at that, bouncing around at high speed and only just keeping ahead of those guys. It is definitely fun, it's gripping, it's high tension. I told you, Clint, just watching this footage because I know it's difficult on that first lap and it definitely grinds the teeth once you get into the later laps because if you're in front you'll have to keep hold of that 
and that brings us again back into second position. Let's look at those palm trees. Very well drawn palm trees, unfortunately. This is a woodland course, and look at that, huge sprites and palm trees in this game. And if you go off, you're gonna crash, and there is no mud in this game, but it's so much better than the power drift experience. Look at that. It stops us and then resets us back on that track. There are cones as well, which I think you can't destroy. They simply send us back in that level. And there are huts on the horizon. So there is variety, there is things going on, but the player really won't notice that. All they're bothered about is keeping their eyes on this weaving road. And as soon as it changes direction, they'll want to do something about it. If you're fast enough to react, then that's fine. But if you can't, and you're not quick enough to take that finger off the fire button, then things are going to meander all over the place and it's going to try and swing us off just like this. And it's going to bounce our eyes up and down. And when was the last Amiga game that made your eyes bounce up and down as it goes over objects, which makes driving it a bit harder? This is the only one as far as I'm concerned. This is the one in the book where you can do that. And so even though it's not immaculate, it does have things about it which are unique. Let's move on to a non-slippy slidey ice world for the next one. And now we're in a Formula One car. And 3D Formula One racers, we definitely got F1 GP on the Amiga. But you'd be surprised that many Formula One racers on the Amiga, unfortunately, weren't that good. And I think there was Nigel Mansell's game that came out, which wasn't this good. And definitely Formula One Grand Prix, if you're playing that, with an uh, original 7 MHz Amiga 500, you'll find that's very slow indeed. But this is fast and it's playable, and this car drives on all surfaces known to mankind, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about anything in this game apart from crashing, apart from slowing down. Driving Force did not get a massive fanfare when it was released and I think this was self-published from the base in Cheshire so that's why it didn't get a massive release on the Amiga and there's not that many people who have played this but it is known, it's definitely a known game it's a lesser known game but there are massive fans of it out there including me so I wanted this for the last game in the series, I didn't want to end on a weedy game, I wanted to end on something with a bit more special Amiga power to it, and this has got that Amiga power. looking like Canada has now overtaken us into first place. We're above Brazil, but Canada now takes the lead as we move on to the return of Big Rigs. Big Rigs on the Amiga. So once you see me ducking and diving and falling around this thing like Big Rigs, it's time to go into the scores. And Amiga Action gave this the low score, surprisingly, with a humongously low 47%. The next score came from Lemon Amiga, who gave this 54%. The next highest score went to CLVG, who awarded this game 61%. The games machine gave it also 61%. And Generation 4 awarded Driving Force 67%. Those are the lowest five scores, and then we get to the higher five scores. So, 
high score went to Amiga Joker, who awarded this game 70%. Amiga User International gave this 80%. Amiga Format, the ever reliable, gave this 81%. The Joystick Magazine awarded this 85%. And the highest score directly went to Zero Magazine, who was bought and paid to pay to play this and pay this homage, and they gave this 85%. That means the average score for driving force is 7 out of 10. So, as you can see by now, this game is amazing. It's better than Super Hang On, maybe, on the Amiga. It's better than Enduro Racer. It's better than many games that we've seen on the Amiga. And this is perhaps more fun than Road Rash as well. And we've covered Road Rash already. It was fast and fun once you got the good bikes later on. This thing throws you in at the deep end. You can see a wonderful tyre rolling around on the back of that bike. And the rider bounces around as well. So this thing is definitely a cut above, look at that whoop 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 and that's fun, things like that are definitely fun, they're not set up to taxes, they're set up to be enjoyable. That means that this game was play tested and this means that it's fun. Moving on to our next course, you can see we're driving a car. And what does this car remind you of? Well, look at the woman whose hair is blowing in that breeze. Well, for my money, the car with the woman's hair blowing in the breeze reminds me of Outrun. And you don't need me to tell you how many billion times better this game is than the Amiga version of Outrun that we got. And I estimate somewhere around 4.76 gajillion percent better. And that's only a rough estimate. So this is Outrun, better than Outrun, but we got only Amiga. It's got brilliant graphics, miles better colours, miles better playability, miles better music, miles better sound effects, miles more races, miles more going on, elevation changes, and that, that kind of thing. So if you want Outrun on the Amiga, remember how it went? U.S. Gold presents from Sega. end of that championship we rolled in in second position it gives us a nice image of us completing that championship we don't get anything else for that but we do get second and we get the champagne and the silver trophy as well but that's not all because we skip on to another gameplay which was recorded recently you can see that's clearer footage. We can also select our vehicle if we select the Mini League, so we don't have to have different vehicles. We can have the same vehicle playing all the way through it. And as I've mentioned, this game is miles better than the games that it's trying to rip off. It does a supreme job, and the graphics were just in the next higher resolution better than this. Instead of ultra low res, they're actually medium res, then this game would have been a diehard classic. And it's those falling off the track things that really spoil it, really infuriate me when I'm in first position. But that's this game, it does that. And that's one of the annoyances, one of the few annoyances I can level at this. So the 
game gives us that variety, it gives us all those options on that menu system, it gives us all the countries that we can choose playing as a boy or a girl. So you do have massive variety of options and that's not all because this game has an easter egg. There weren't that many easter eggs in Amiga games and we've covered many already but this is an easter egg which wasn't included in the easter egg special. Yes, anybody who remembers Splashdown on the PlayStation might remember a format like this. We didn't really get a 3D Splashdown game on the Amiga, not including Outrun Europa, but this game is better than Splashdown. As you can see, it's got full digitized graphics, orchestral sound, full motion video, it's got replay action, it's got digitized footage, everything about it is immaculate. It's sampled and digitized to the best and it has high, high, high playability to the max. We can also jump around as well. So this is a bonus, they didn't have to include this in the game and even the maker of this game, Jules Burt, wasn't even aware of it, even though he probably programmed it a long time ago. They did a, a change in the graphics and they came up with this as a bonus if you complete the Mini League and I think the Mini Knockout as well, maybe if you're on the podium it gives you this as a bonus game. So this is better than Super Jet Bike Simulator, this is better than anything by Coldmasters that were released on budget price. This is a free game within this game and if you paid full price for it then at least you got this and that took away the bitterness of having to afford it. But these days you get it all on copy so you can find a copy of this on the internet. You can play it, you can experience this for yourself and definitely watching this is not as good as playing this because you don't get to interact with that screen. So thank you once again for viewing a play guide to driving for us. I hope you know how to play it now and thank you very much.